everybody, it is I, Mr. Charlie Murray. Can you believe that Star Wars The Force Awakens has been out for two weeks now? And it's made one billion dollars in those two weeks alone. Amazing. And if you haven't seen it already, check out my review on Star Wars The Force Awakens, which you can watch by clicking the annotation or going to the link in the description. However, despite it being a great film, it has its problems. So I'm here to tell you my top five worst moments in Star Wars The Force Awakens. Just so you know, there are, of course, spoilers. Hello, did you hear me? I said this video will contain spoilers, so go away, watch the movie. Though, you know, it's been two weeks now, and if you haven't seen the movie already, or haven't been spoiled already, I'd be quite surprised, to be honest with you. I also posted my top five list of my favourite moments from the movie, which you can check out by clicking the annotation, or again, go into the link in the description. Feel free to post what you disliked about the movie, also in the comment section, and please use spoiler tags. So without further ado, here are my top five. Number five. Little to no Phasma. They hyped Phasma a little too much for this movie, and no doubt it was to try and sell the merchandise for her, but in the 2 hours and 10 minute movie, she had around 10 minutes of screen time. Sure, she was there in spirit in some scenes, but that's besides the point. Now, of course, it's been confirmed that Phasma or Gwendolyn Christie will return for episode 8, and I just hope to see more about her background. We understand who she is, but not exactly why she is the way that she is. Was she also taken from her parents at a young age, or does she have another sort of background? Here's hoping we find out. Number 4. Rathtars. This is probably the scene everybody who watches the movie finds quite unnecessary. No doubt there will be some deleted scenes when the movie comes out on home media, but to be honest with you, they probably could have added one of those deleted scenes and replaced it with this. Sure, the scene was fun at times, like when Finn is being dragged around the ship and Rey saves him. And while we're on this topic, why did the Rathtars eat the other people they grabbed, but not Finn? Oh, wait, of course, the plot needed him alive, of course. Anyway, the point is, the Raftars were just unnecessary money spent on a creature we'll probably never ever see again in the movies. So, what was the point? Number three, R2 just wakes up. I am so glad I am not the only one in the world who thought of this moment. Now, there's been a lot of debate as to why R2 just woke up randomly. Some say that Luke knew it was safe enough to reawaken R2 from all the way across the galaxy. Okay. And another theory has been that R2 was always aware of his surroundings, but only chose to wake up when Rey was near. You know what my theory is? He woke up because the plot called for it. JJ himself has even tried to cover up this plot when he spoke to Entertainment Weekly and said, BB-8 comes up and says something to him, which is basically, I've got this piece of a map. Do you happen to have the rest? The idea was, R2, who has been all over the galaxy, is still in his coma, but he hears this, and it triggers something that would ultimately wake him up. Sorry, you can't get away with what JK Rowling does with Harry Potter JJ. You can't say stuff like that and expect people to go with it. It has to be explained in the movie or it didn't happen. You know as well as the rest of the fans that if it doesn't happen in a movie or a show or a book, it can be changed like that. The thing is as well, is that we will never actually see it truly explained. Number two. Just another Death Star. We had the first Death Star in A New Hope which was absolutely awesome. Then they made a second Death Star in Return of the Jedi, which was a ballsy move, but it kind of made a little bit of sense. Then they made a third Death Star in The Force Awakens and renamed it Star Killer Base. Um, what? Don't get me wrong, as amazing as it was to see the power of the Star Killer Base, are you really telling me that's the best JJ could have come up with? If you've played some of the class stories in Star Wars The Old Republic, some of the terror weapons the Empire comes up with are truly phenomenal. Some include the Gauntlet, which could destroy anything in hyperspace, in hyperspace for crying out loud, the Death Mark, a satellite that could kill its target anywhere in the world with precision from space, and the Ultrawave Transmitter, which was a device which could control rack ghouls, which if you don't already know are considered the stuff of nightmares in Star Wars. 
You get scratched by one, you become one. You don't want to meet a rat girl. Yeah. I really hope these guys are actually considered canon one day, or maybe they make a Star Wars horror movie with these guys as the main focus. That would be amazing. Oh, I wish they would make that. Um, anyway, uh, the point is they couldn't even come up with something more original. I'm not saying they should have copied from SWOTOR, but JJ could have come up with anything. Anything! And he chose another Death Star. Okay, and finally, number one. Luke Skywalker was in it for a minute! Whoa, 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 I thought you changed your mind about that. Well, I did, but come on, man, all that hype for nothing. I won't let you make it your worst moment. I'll use my Jedi mind powers if you don't change your mind. Uh, Jedi mind tricks only work on the weak-minded. Are you saying I'm weak-minded? You will not hate on Luke Skywalker. I will not hate on Luke Skywalker. Much better. Um, um, where was I again? Oh, of course, yes. Number one. Ray and Finn are killing people and are okay with it? I made a massive rant in my review about Luke being in the movie for one minute, but I've come to appreciate this a little more. However, the thing that still bothers me is that Ray and Finn, who have never actually killed anyone until this movie, are killing stormtroopers, and they seem to be okay with it. You could argue that they had to in order to survive, sure, but that's not the point I'm making. What I'm saying is that they've killed people. They don't show any signs of regret, contemplation, sadness, or many other mixed emotions at all in the film based on that. They just happily move on with their lives. I can understand every other character not feeling these emotions anymore when killing people. For example, Han Solo, he's probably killed so many people in the past. But when it's your first kill ever? Surely you're bound to have some sort of breakdown. And perhaps with Rey, maybe I could understand her emotions surrounding killing a little bit more if she has killed before and then had her mind wiped like many people are implying, meaning she's subconsciously used to it. Although, now that I think about it, Luke didn't seem to feel any remorse to killing either. Perhaps he likes killing. Oh. Could he really be on the path to the dark side? Well, that was my top five. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos. This will be the final video I do in 2015. So I hope you all have a happy new year and I hope 2016 will be a great year for you all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time and a farewell to you.